This has been my most productive week in a long time, which is a good sign for getting back on track. I started off by making a list of what still needs to be done as far as systems work, and it's a fairly long list, but I've already crossed a few things off of it. The biggest new feature this week is ship trading, which has one major complication. What to do with the items from the old ship? Originally I was thinking I would just sell everything, but that's not a good solution for crew, especially if you have to pay a fee every time you hire them. So what I settled on instead is a transfer list. Basically everything gets put into a list, and then from there you can either place it in the new ship or discard it, which means either selling for items or firing for crew. I also want to make sure you don't leave anything behind, so I prevent you from leaving until that list is cleared one way or another. Once I decide how it should work, the next step was to mock up the UI, just placing everything manually in the Godot editor for now. And then once I was happy with how it looked, I moved on to populating that UI from code, which is mostly a matter of copy and pasting code from other parts of the UI and making relatively trivial changes. I've also applied what I learned from generating the crew portraits to start generating icons for the ships. The only surprise here was that if you leave HDR enabled, which it is by default, the viewport will use a texture format that will not save transparency. Once I turned that off, everything worked fine. I've also started using ship icons on the map to reflect which ship you currently have. Now as you can see, even if I close the ship tab, the transfer list remains visible, and if I try to leave, it'll show me a message explaining why I can't. Another big change this week is how I'm enforcing pathing requirements. Specifically, you can't wall off the cargo so that the AI can't get to it, and I don't want you to wall off your crew either. I'm sort of following the same rules as tower defense games. There has to be some valid path, although it can go through doors, thus requiring the AI to hack the door in order to get through. But instead of enforcing this every time you place an object and preventing you from placing an object that blocks the path, now I'm placing warning icons over everything that's unreachable. Then if you try to leave while there are still any warning icons present, it will explain that you have to clear a path to those tiles. I think this way it's both less annoying and a little bit more clear about what the exact problem is. And the last new feature this week is animations. Specifically right now it's just idle and walking animations, but I've got two versions of each for whether the character is armed or unarmed. But there's a bit of an unexpected complication here. When you issue a move order and it does the path finding, the path will be composed of multiple steps. Some straight line moves, some diagonal moves, potentially swapping places with another unit, potentially opening a door. So it isn't as simple as starting the walk animation at the beginning of a move and ending it at the end of a move. At the end of any one of these movement steps, if I switch from the walking animation to the idle animation, and then I start another walking step, the animation is now restarted and it doesn't look smooth. So instead I've added an action called end movement that I'm inserting into the action queue as I'm breaking the movement down into these individual steps. But there's still a lot of work to be done here with interleaving other animations, and especially with the AI in the case that they run out of action points before completing their action queue. Currently the action queue gets cleared when that happens, but I think I need a special flag on some things like end movement to just ensure that they get done anyway. But I think I'll save the rest of the animation work for the polish phase, because for a game like this, it doesn't seem important to have an animation for every action. I'll just add animations for however much I have time for. And while this has been a more productive week than usual, I don't really have much else to say, so... Oh no, that's way too short. Well, let's talk about game design for a minute. So one of the things I want to do in this game is not penalize you for experimentation. That's why you can always resell things at the same price you bought them for. And the only exception to this, the only thing that you can't undo and get something back, is crew. So I think I'm going to actually change that. Instead of having an upfront cost for hiring crew, I think I'll have them just take a percentage of your job payout, but then, to keep you from having too many early on, I'll have a maximum capacity per ship. The starter ship will probably have a maximum of, say, two crew members, and then maybe I'll go up to nine for the biggest ships at the end of the game. And like everything else that you can buy and then resell at the same price, ship trades are undoable without losing any money. You get the full value of the ship in trade-in every time. This also prevents the failure state of firing your last crew member and then not having enough money to hire another one, which would be pretty silly to do, but this just seems like a good logical way to prevent it, because you wouldn't have to pay anything to hire back some crew so that you can continue the game. As always, it really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.